accidentally I saw another advert for a PhD in Edinburgh. That was 1964 December. And I went up to Edinburgh and I met a wonderful lady, Professor MacLeod, and she took me to do the PhD. And I did the PhD started in 1965 and I got my PhD in 1967. It was fairly quick by PhD standards. And I started to, to work on barley. Uh, it was a cereal that is used by, as you know, by brewers and distillers and also barley. You can get um, pearl barley in soup and you can also use barley to make malt and malt is used to make beer and whiskey. So my research was on barley, how you could process barley better and more efficiently. So I had to do a lot on the science of barley germination and growth. Now, I finished my PhD in 1967. I stayed on and I did a postdoc fellowship, still working on barley science. And then I got a job in Surrey um, and I had to drive through Lambert when I'm visiting my, 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 my mother. And um, I got a job in Surrey in, in near Red Hill. And um, that was a research center, highly sophisticated research center for looking at plants like barley. And it was owned by the brewers. So I worked there from 1968 until 1977, 68 to 77. And it was there that I did some significant research on barley. And if you look up, as I said, on the computer, um, you will find just two words, just type in a braided barley, a braided barley, and you'll see some of the work I've done. That was an invention of mine, which actually speeded up the process of changing barley into malt. And um, I then left the, the research center. Oh, a bit of work I did there was I was the first person to take barley and say, and, and other cereals and actually use the scanning electron microscope to show the internal structure and how the barley changes itself into mold. So that was also quite innovative. Um, I left in 1977 and I got a job at the Harriet Watt University. And that's where I did my PhD. It was a college when I did my PhD, but now it was a university in 1977. And at the Harriet Watt University, I started as a lecturer. And I retired in 2005. So 1977 to 2005. And during that period, I went from lecturer to professor. Um, I um, taught many students. Some of my students are now very famous. And one, for example, if you've heard of Brewdog, the beer, the owner was saying recently how much money he, you know, he, he, he has made, millions. Well, he's my student. I taught him. And there are other brewers all over the world who I've taught between 1977 and 2005. And one of the things that I also did during that period, I traveled all over the world, um, talking about cereals, talking about barley, talking about the science of them, um, whether it's China, India, Brazil, United States, um, you know, Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, um, uh, South Africa. So I've traveled all over the world talking about cereals that science and the technology but one of the most significant things i did was when the guinness company which is very big you know they own diageo um 
they asked me to go to Nigeria for them because they had trouble. They had four breweries in Nigeria and the government had banned the import of European grain into Nigeria. And therefore, Heineken was in a similar problem. And they asked me because of my expertise with, with, with cereals and barley and other grains to go and see how I could help. And to cut a long story short, what we did, we substituted the African grain, sorghum, for barley. And therefore that has helped local farmers um, to be able to sell their products to a big company, um, cereal products, um, cereal grains. And that has helped not only local farmers, and now that practice is being practiced all over Africa. Um, and uh, it has helped the company, but it's also helped the local the people. And when I left Nigeria for the last time, the black brewers took me to the airport and they say, thank you for giving us LRM. And that's local raw material. They had great pride that their local grain was in the product of one of the biggest companies in the world. And therefore, you know, what is important in this story is that with just my mother and she working hard to get 86 pounds to bring me here, her love for me and 86 pounds is why I'm talking to you today. And therefore, all the honors that I've uh, 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 achieved, um, you know, and the most significant is, is, the, is, is the knighthood and also the Jamaica government made me the honorary consul for Scotland and also they just gave me, uh, the Jamaica government, a CD which is Commander of Distinction because I've done a lot of work also since I retired on the history of slavery and the links between Scotland and slavery and also Britain and slavery. And Finally, what I'm doing at the moment, I, I, I'm doing a lot of work related to explaining the history of, 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 of slavery and its importance to Britain. So Edinburgh Council, the Scottish Government and Edinburgh University have asked me to chair committees trying to um, find out about the legacies or the benefits that Scotland and Britain gained from slavery. And a lot of companies have contacted me to look at how we could improve representation of black and minority ethnic people in their companies and in the management of their companies. So although I'm retired, I'm busy as ever, but it is very important and as long as I can manage it in terms of health wise, etc. I will continue to do that. My mom is no longer here, but um, you know, it is important that, you know, we cannot change the past of what's happened, but we can always change the consequences. Consequences such as racism through education for the better. And we should all work together because we are one humanity. There is no such thing as different races and that one race is better than the next. We're all one humanity, nothing less. Thank you very much and all best wishes with your work and with all your hopes for the future. Thank you.